a solar system where the parent star has run out of fuel and is now by dead dying stuff. So what we're gonna do we're gonna take serious B and we're gonna rename it. Slow in time, just a time. So this is like a very old white dwarf, like it's very old. It's like a, a thousand billion years old, and it's circled by the remains of a once the very vibrant planetary system. So right now um the So when this star died, basically what happened was the star grew into a giant that we can see here or here and it destroyed its planets and and then the material started circling around the white dwarf planets formed and so for um like a low uh a time these planets circled the star or the ultra white dwarf for many or billions of years. So, <coughs> what we have here in actual fact is a good couple of charred plants. So, This one has just been destroyed, so it's lifeless. This one, surprisingly, lies like, like, basically where life can take hold. So this is going to be a pretty. It's. So this planet, it's survived the onslaught from its parent star, 
Well, it didn't survive. It didn't even survive the onslaught from this pedestal. Basically, this planet has formed in an area where the planet can take hold. It can. It was able to form around the star. Um, And so, what we have here now is a really nice looking world. I mean, I could just do a, uh, like a little bit green here. That's a nice looking planet. So, you, you probably all wondering, like, <coughs> yes, the planets are in fact larger than the star. That will be expected. But it will be expected. So this planet isn't going to be that lifeless as everybody would expect such a barren planet. It's not really barren at all. Get a vase. Give this planet like a slowish rotation. It has a similar axis to neighboring sister planet <sighs> um, so Pensa star we have Pensa star um, it's sl it's the mass is slightly bigger than the Sun but by radius It is smaller than the Earth by a significant. Um, it's about as big as Venus, really. So, um, If I reverse the orbital plane of this planet, uh, so it goes retrograde to all the other planets, then that should at least try and repair what is left of the system. So if we make this about one Jupiter, make it complete hydrogen. Because why not? Um, and probably put like a rocky planet, and that is one hell of a name. Don't know what that says, but you guys might be able to know.
the chance of us finding a white dwarf, a very cool white dwarf with a lot of earth-like worlds around it. It is very remote, but you guys actually might be surprised that white dwarfs can actually harbour earth-like worlds. Not as in like earth like as in like um as in like what they do like in actual earth but we like earth sized planets. Like planets about as big as Venus to be honest. So One, oh, this planet seems to be struggling to maintain some of its heat. Let's give it a little bit of a kickstart on the way, just lowering its albedo. This planet is cooking. Why don't we put a comet to the mix? Shall we? I think we should make it nearly completely ice. difficult to see tell um, so this 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 gas charge could be mostly water ice because well why not it's gonna be a fairly system all the planets go one way basically what happens is this say this planet is going this way right right now it's going this way what you do is you get a very large high speed object smash into this planet and smash it hard enough to make it go the opposite direction and you go to retrograde so basically trying to say is that oh this moon is actually being ripped to shreds so we get rid of that and then we why don't we get oh a ring system First, we need to map it out. So, about seven, five, twelve, oh, about fifteen, four, five, five. Right. So, Fifteen. Four. 
is going to be the total mass is going to be about I would say about 20 Earths number of particles so we slow down time another ring in so now uh, planet well, the star is surrounded by a inner ring, uh, inner asteroid belt. But there was something peculiar about this asteroid belt. Um, it's how should I say? It? Giants, we got uh, three if you count this, four rocky planets. Well, this might soon turn into a gas giant, it depends on how big it gets. Um, it is starting to swallow up some of the. Um, material around it. Why don't we try doing this? Doing it retrograde. Again. This might be confusing to some of you guys. Solid black. And it should start to clear some of the material out of the way. We're gonna 
we're gonna uh, I just want to see how big this really is compared to So about here, so any like object uh, uh, slightly smaller in the room that comes about here will get shredded to pieces because of the white dwarf's massive gravitational pull. And you're probably wondering why is this planet, this super earth, not getting shredded? That's a good question. The reason why is because the planet is able to survive. The onslaught of the gravitational waves from the um, from the white dwarf. So, right, right now, when this white dwarf was first born obviously when when the it, it died when the star died or when the red giant died this white dwarf was spinning incredibly fast probably about so probably about that fast right but now it's about like this so it's spinning very slowly the reason why it's spinning this slowly is because the planetary mass of all the planets combined able to slow down in, um, and obviously the largest planet here uh, Ania um, because of its size the gravitational tug was able to slow the white dwarf down so now the white dwarf uh, has a rotational period of nearly five and a half hours Um, so, it is kind of interesting that, because, obviously, I mean, I know I made, like, the entire system and things like that, but this planet grew from about just over six times the mass growth to nearly seven times the mass growth because it's gobbled up some of this material. Now in real life this material would not form a planet at all because it's just too close to the white dwarf. Well I say that but really material about this close would get shredded up and then it won't be able to form. But material about this far away, it might have a chance of forming a planet. It might turn out to be an absolutely ginormous planet. Or it could turn out to be a couple of miniature worlds. Now, um, the Uh, the white dwarf because it's surrounded by all these planets um, the white dwarf will be experiencing some kind of massive gravitational battle with the planets not massive but it will feel the gravitational tug from the planets and so because this white dwarf is uh, Nini is over uh, 950 billion years old. Um, it's it would. This is basically. This is real, in in a sense. So from like 36 seconds of rotation, every rotation, 
to five and a half to nearly five and a half hours of radiation takes nearly like 950 billion years and to be honest I kind of think that that is correct because obviously we have the uh, gravitational pull from all the uh, planets um, and things like that but this planet here is still growing in mass and oh my god it's actually over seven times the mass of the earth um, it's still it, it's it, the acceleration process of the growing is actually starting to increase drastically um, it's, it, it's gaining a much uh, bigger crust now that the, it, the core should be incredibly hot by now because of the gravitational influence of the the inner middle and outer mantle compressing down onto the liquid outer and middle core while the inner iron ball that we call as the inner core will be generating a massive magnetic field so the magnetic field would look something similar to this so not a massive magnetic field but magnetic field Big enough to withstand the solar infernus. This planet will probably have a strongish magnetic field, uh, so it can survive the massive onslaught. And as you can guys see here, back to field doesn't quite line up with the star. It lines up about here. That's because the charged particles. Because the stars rotate that way, charged particles are kind of slung at an angle. When they hit, they change the actual uh, like uh, direction that the magnetic field faces. This planet obviously is going to have a magnetic field as well. This planet. It's going to have a weak-ish magnetic field, uh, even though it's a fibre world. This planet on the other end is just going to have a mega magnetic field. It's going to have a sh just a massive magnetic field, enough to protect this planet here. Now, this moon here is going to have a magnetic field, uh, and that's it. Oh yeah, the comet might as well have a magnetic field, because why not? So it's got its own, like, small magnetic field. Uh, so let me get rid of that. Increase. Uh, we should start to see some magnetic influence soon. Oh, there you go. So we have a slight magnetic field around the comet. The comet is actually starting to burn up because of the solar uh, ionized radiation from the white dwarf is burning the outer layers of the comet away and so that affects the comet in a way that we normally see around us but because the gravitational influence of the white dwarf is so incredibly strong that this comet or and all the planets only orbit the White Dwarf in like this comet only oh, orbits the White Dwarf in only just under 14 days while this planet here 6 hours that's insanely fast this White Dwarf generates a massive magnetosphere ooh ooh that's Unexpected, okay. 
I can't turn it off now. Um. Okay, so it's got a disk of material around it. That's obviously oh. Oh my god, guys, that's so cool! Wow! Wow! That's gorgeous! That is amazing! That is just outstanding. Now, oh, I may have actually jet trail basic one kilometer. So now you could actually make. That is amazing, so we've oh, this poor poor planet here is getting smacked by radiation. But this planet is getting its fair share of radiation. That is that is really cool guys. I never knew I could do that. Um speed up time just a tad oh let me slow it back down all right uh that is absolutely outstanding oh wow oh wow wow look at that guys look at that look at that I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but Jesus God. Wow. So, we've made probably one of the most hostile places to live in the universe. So, thank you guys for, oh look at that, oh wow. Mass loss total. What was that in Earth? Uh, how about Moon? Kilograms. Was that 200? No, 23 billion, 305 million. No, that's 2 billion, 330 million, 540,672 kilograms of total mass loss. Wow. Life likelihood is a bit dull. But that'll be expected. But I really do appreciate you guys watching this video. And if you would like me, if you guys want to drop a comment into the comment section below, anything, that'll be cool, guys. I appreciate you watching this, and I will accept all comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video and it will be really cool if you guys can show your friends, show your family and it will be really cool if you guys can just show me the love, just just show my channel the love, subscribe, if, when you subscribe you know when I upload videos uh, and things like that. Thank you guys for watching, uh, and I really do hope that you guys like this video. Bye.